From the confines of St. Paul Central High School, TSB Television, again, welcome to the high school girls basketball. It's not deja vu, but we are here for a big early season matchup between two top 10 teams. The Richfield Spartans, number one in class 3A, pay a visit to play the St. Paul Central Minutemen, number five in class 4A. Welcome to Central High School, and now we want to welcome Leanne Wise, our former head coach of Richfield High School with us. Uh, different being up here? A lot different up here, but I kind of like it's a little less stressful up here. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to worry about when to call time out, and among other things. Yes. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for the Richfield Spartans. It's number 14, Jessica January. She's the senior, one of the uh, players to watch throughout the year. Number 23, Haley Lindblom. She's also a guard. Number 30, Sierra Ford Washington. She plays guard. Kyla Adams, one of the new Richfield players. She's a four, sophomore forward, number 40. And number 43, Leah Barnes, a sophomore center. Pretty experienced lineup for Richfield. St. Yeah, Paul three of the five are returning starters from last year. And they play really well together. Plus, there are three seniors in that mix. St. Paul Central will start the same five that you've seen in our last two games. So that means Lyric Williams, number three at guard, will get the start. Betsy McDonald will be on the floor, number five. She's a guard. Shade Chapman, number 11, the 6'2 senior center. Number 14, Raina Chirot, the 6'1 junior center. And number 15, I should say, number 14 is Jada Haynes. She's the 5'7 sophomore guard. Richfield only played one game, and that was a win over Staples Motley. Scott Staden said he actually didn't mind uh, getting a lot of fine-tuning work, but how do you think Richfield looks at this against the central team that has had some time to find their chemistry on the floor? Well, I think when they started the game, they were a little rusty, had some new players in there. They were looking for leadership on the court, but second half came around, and they started to run, which is their strength, and just blew them away. And speaking of adjustments, now that you've had a few days to uh, grasp this concept yourself, how are you handling uh, the new stage of grandmotherhood? Oh. I love the little guy. Mason, he is so special. It's like falling in love again. That's a, I don't think I can, <laughs> if I say any more, I'm going to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> he is a special little guy. Two weeks old today. Well, congratulations on that. I know one of, uh, one of your big uh, adjustments, of course, the other one was seeing your daughter now playing in college. Yeah, we went out to watch them play last weekend out in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. We were able to see her play two games. Uh, she's starting on the freshman squad and doing very well, so it was a lot of fun for us to see her. Richfield will wear the white jersey, St. Paul Central wearing the black, and Richfield, of course, made state tournament last year. Uh, you person next to me knows a thing or two about that experience. Uh, made it to the championship round, lost to De La Salle by 20. What do you think they got from that experience though? Because I remember there was a busload of fans and that 3A game turned out to be the marquee one in terms of attendance. Yeah, we had 42 buses that went. It was an amazing time for the Richfield community and our basketball program. Uh, memories that will last forever. I see uh, Jessica January uh, dumped her blonde hair dye as well. Yeah, I like this look better. Maybe it was because you left. <laughs> I'm not sure. She's headed off to DePaul next year, and she's going to be a nice addition to their squad, too. Coach Bruno is really excited about that. Yeah. Well, she'll be uh, getting used to the confines of Allstate Arena where DePaul plays. I've been there a few times. They also host the Chicago Sky in the WNBA in the summer. St. Paul Central with the first possession. We mentioned 6-0, and their best start in six years. And today, Chapman gets them off to a rocketing start here. Like Richfield, see how well they handle the press. Throw it over and run. Willie Taylor mentioned that was going to be a key of his, how well Central can execute the full court press. Lindblom almost missed time to pass, but January was there for the recovery. And she has very quick reflexes, and we also know she's flexible. She used to take part in gymnastics. And over the years, we've seen her do the splits and somersaults and a cartwheel. Just about everything she can do. She's a very gifted young lady. Nice And drive. on cue, she gets the first basket for Richfield. And on top of that, she is a two-time state champion hurdler. Didn't win last year, but she broke her own record in the preliminary round of the state track tournament. 
There you go. Ford Washington with the steal, and Jada Haynes pokes her from behind. She'll be called for the foul. They're going to need a lot of that kind of play out of Ford Washington and Lynn Bloom. When the girls drive, the double team's taking the ball away. Ford Washington and Lynn Bloom are capable. I was there. I do have to acknowledge my presence when Richfield beat Kennedy. It was those two who put together a very strong game, and Lynn Bloom just caught fire from the three-point line. Yeah, she had 23 points that game, kind of came out of her shell a little bit. It was fun to watch. I remember talking to her afterwards. She couldn't stop laughing. Had no idea how it happened. She's always bubbly. <laughs> she was bubbly when I talked to her uh, before the game. She's Richfield's homecoming queen this year as well. Just a well-rounded young lady. I'm sure that was a very popular choice. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it was, I'm sure she was well-received uh, for, for that distinguished achievement. And Lyric Williams stepped on the line, so Richfield will keep possession. Lindblom probably would be better served to kick that ball out on the wing to January and then get it back or go through. She'll take her defense with her. Don't you just love how you can uh, break down all the coaching and strategical maneuvers now that you're up here? Yeah, absolutely. It's a better view up here on the floor. You can't see all that stuff. Nice move by Jess. There's Ford, a shot Washington. Sierra loves. It didn't go in, but it was the open shot. Right one to take. <laughs> Richfield got back on defense very nicely. Well, Richfield's going to need their speed, and Scott Staden talked about that. He's hoping to speed. Williams for three off the nice heel. Nice box off. out by January, and they're off and running. This is their strength. January running, running, running. Oh. Can't score, but uh, scramble for the ball, and it's picked up. Lindblom for three. No. And the ball will stay in bounds, but into the hands of Haynes, who is picked off by January, but she couldn't find... Kyle Adams, who, Kyla, who fouls McDonald. And we're going to need a moment to blink. Yeah. Breathe. Oh. <laughs> a lot of action there. I like the hustle play. I like the saving the ball out of bounds. First personal foul for Adams. First team foul for Richfield. And to get to my point, Scott Stadium mentioned for Richfield. They're going to need their speed to compensate for their lack of size against Central's posts of Chapman and Chereau. Chapman, turn around, and one. I think Barnes probably needs to do a little better job not making the catch so easy. I know that's one of the things that Statham preaches to them. Don't make it easy for them to get the ball. Chapman at the line was five of eight in Saturday's win over Duluth East had 17 points, 13 came in the first half and showed a sign of what Willie Taylor is hoping to get out of her and that's become more aggressive on offense. Great defender, but would like to see her do some more scoring. It's 6-2 in favor of St. Paul Central. Ford Washington a little strong. Actually, it should be 4-2. That's Sierra's shot. I'm a little surprised she's missed two of them there. You have to excuse me. I know them by their first names, not their last. <laughs> That's all right. I'm pretty familiar with the Richfield uh, roster myself, having covered them over the years. We'll be there, of course, in a couple of weeks for the Richfield Holiday Classic, which has expanded to a boys' tournament now. So there are going to be four games in each day, total of eight. That's a lot of basketball. And Chapman's going to get called for the bump. Leah Barnes went to the floor. In Staples Motley, Leah Barnes, she took three charges. She's really doing a great job with the help side and with keeping ground. Very impressive for a center age-wise, should be a freshman. Yep. She's very young for her age, for a sophomore. But she gives Richfield a little size, and present company... Uh, <laughs> Acknowledged here, that was something uh, they didn't have much of a year ago in no. terms of getting in the post. Yeah. I mean, their tallest player was Guyton, I believe, and she stood 5'10". Yep, we were short. <laughs> in January, I know she got scouted by a lot of schools. Big Ten, Iowa State took a look at her. And Why do you think she chose DePaul? I think the final analysis of it all was she really liked Coach Bruno. He came to a lot of games. He really showed that he cared. Do you think he'll like that three-pointer from Kyla Adams? 
That is a nice shot for a big girl. Now they're gonna have to come out and guard her. Adams. There you go, another defensive battle by Leah Barnes. Oh. They will stay with Central, but still, they're getting in there and disrupting the passing lanes as best as they can. But Kyla Adams and her twin sister Kaylee, new players to Richfield's roster this year, and gave Richfield exactly what they needed, a little more presence down. Holy cow, Lyric Williams, NBA three. That's some range. She was hitting them from the corner in the win over Duluth East. Season high 14 in that game, 12 came in the second half. January has an opening in the lane, but too strong. Sherell with the rebound, but she throws it right to Ford Washington. Now January for three. In and out, nice Lynn Bloom. for Lynn Bloom. All five go. foot five of her, and she draws the foul on Sherell. And that's one of Sherell's weaknesses, at least in the games I've covered, not having the discipline on defense. She fouled out in the win over Chanhassen even though she got a career high and her action was limited on Saturday because of foul trouble. She has a huge height advantage there. She just got to let Lindblom come down with the ball and then stand up straight. She would really struggle to do anything with it. January struggling a little bit but with this Richfield team and even last year what you're seeing is January will lead the pack but they have enough talent around where January does not have to face the pressure of trying to rescue them every time. Chapman off the heel. There's January getting a rebound. The younger sister of Pamela January who's playing college basketball at South Dakota. Yeah, I got to watch her on TV against Kansas State on Saturday. January coming up short and oh, McDonald finding Chapman open and good Defense Lynn there. In there again. And Adams got in there to disrupt Chapman. So Chapman doesn't have the breakaway speed. And Richfield gets the ball by virtue of the possession arrow. January just needs to settle down a little bit here. She's long on her shot. She's getting some great looks. She's just a little bit long. And we've seen her navigate through those circumstances before. You know, there are times where she's on her shooting game. Other times, like you said, a little high, a little low and it takes a little while to find her form. Ford Washington gets bumped. Who's the foul on? Coach Statham's getting a little fired up over there. He's calling for the refs to call the uh, hand check. Foul was on Williams. I'm sure he showed absolutely none of that when you were coaching. No, not at all, <laughs> and I didn't either. Adams again, runner, too strong. Chapman there you go, tried to nice get the hustle. rebound. And there you see Kaylee Adams, number 22, the twin sister. Oh. And we're gonna have a foul on Kyla Adams as she was uh, getting a little too grabby with LaShondra Curtis. Usually they'll let you do the forearm on the back, but it looked like she had her hand on her back. For a two-man crew, these guys are doing a pretty good job keeping up with the girls in the fast pace. Richfield calls timeout with 12.15 remaining. And St. Paul Central up 7-5, and we're seeing a, a very strategical game here. And you might be seeing Richfield's lack of touch. You know, again, they've only played one game. St. Paul Central's played six, but Richfield's defense certainly doesn't look like they've been rusty. No, I know that uh, Coach Statham really works hard on defense every day at practice. That's a huge emphasis for him. And what do you think the transition has been like for him, you, with you being the outgoing coach and him taking over? I mean, he was an assistant, but now he's got to be the one making the calls. Yeah, he's, he's done a great job adjusting. Him and I talk almost daily, either by phone or through emails, uh, you know, being a head coach is much different than the JV coach or assistant coach because the buck stops with him. Are you sure you, you retired from your head coaching duties or maybe Richfield worked the deal yeah. without I, our knowledge? I said I'll be uh, the backdoor coach and then uh, if we get to state again, I wanted one of those five seats behind the bench. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that... Now that you've mentioned that on camera, we will uh, certainly hang on yeah. to that. So in case he decides to renege on that offer, we'll have some video evidence. Yeah, it won't be easy to get there, that's for sure. But it's a, Well, it's a 3A 
looking to be the toughest field overall. Yeah. Jones from the corner. Little off strong. The heel. Oh, nice rebound there. Lyric Williams, oh, but go. she loses aggressive the ball play. to Kaylee Adams, Good. and Adams is fouled. Nice aggressive play. We, Richfield is the number one team and one of the favorites, but De La Salle, they've won the last two. Benilde St. Margaret's is always tough. Hill Murray's in the mix. I mean, 3A, you, you just never know who the teams are going to be. Simley was given a lot of preseason yeah. attention. I think Simley will be a really tough contest for us in our conference this year. They've got the two big girls plus a couple of long shooter guards. Kaylee Adams off the top. Couldn't get it from the top of the key. Curtis with the rebound. Williams wanted to set up, but January raced in there. And Williams nice tried defense. to find the outlet. And here is Richfield with numbers. It's Ford Washington trying to draw the foul, and she does on Betsy McDonald. She'll go to the line for a pair. As I said, that's going to be their strength to run. Get up and down the floor. I, I notice here Scott's really shortened his bench up from the Staples Motley game. Are there any other track athletes? I know January's one, but it seems like a lot of Richfield players could run track. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Bobby Beaver runs track. I think that's probably the only one that I know of. Mackenzie and I don't Schramm, see Beaver's name on the elbow. roster. Oh, yeah, there I see her there, but one of the reserves. Mackenzie Schramm's in, and she's basically not played for about three years. She's had a variety of leg injuries, so it's good to see her back on the court. Having covered many levels of women's basketball over the years, McDonald loses the handle. And Richfield gets it off McDonald, so the Spartans will get the ball back. Yeah. But having covered it, that can be very detrimental. Uh-oh, January open down court. And she's hacked by Jada Jones, and that was about the only way you could stop her from getting an open layup. I don't think anybody from Central can catch her if she gets that wide open without following her. Now when you can run the 100-meter hurdles in 14.32 seconds. She's just a gifted young lady when it comes to athletics and academically. Richfield has yet to make a free throw, though. There you go. And they make their first. That makes it a 7-6 game. I like this pressure. Not real tight, but just a tough full court man-to-man -man and make them work for it. Leah on the nice pick up there when Jess got beat around by the pick. McDonald gets the kiss off the glass and the score is now 9-6. Uh, the scoreboard operator new tonight, having a little bit of trouble, but I'm sure we'll get the hang of it. Of course, you can see it on the screen. There's Schramm for three, but it, she's short. Ford Washington, well, Richfield will get it, but Raina Sherall made her think a little bit. Are they Williams short a going point back in. for Richfield there? They made one free throw. It should to read. Be. Yeah, 9-6, that's right. Yeah. A three, a two, and a one. Low scoring, though. Again, Richfield's defense stymieing central, but not able to get much on offense yet. Schramm from the wing again. No. And dead ball rebound to St. Paul Central. Yeah. If Shram hits one of those, she's going to help out the offense a lot because I'll have to go out and cover her. That's one of her strengths is outside shooting. Shram, a 5'7 senior forward, and I th the ball looks like it stuck. It went got into the Gatorade yeah. container and got a little wet, so they have to dry it off. <laughs> Not sure why they just didn't grab another one. Well, all forms of basketball, there's one game ball, even in the yep. WNBA. Yep. And I know this because there was a Lynx, you know, you know those uh, activities they do for the kids out there. One of them accidentally grabbed the game ball. Williams couldn't haul it in, and Jada Jones, a little off touch on the pass. I won't forget that either because the in-house 
uh, talent, uh, B right, <laughs> was screaming at the kid. You say, that was the gay ball, <laughs> trying to get it back. Well, the official left it there in the floor, so what do you think a kid's going to do if, they, exactly. if he or she sees it? Nice defense by Central. Three of them collapsed. No foul called, and January, good defense on Chelsea. Kids are almost like a defensive back playing against wide receiver. Richfield needs a bucket here. It's been a long time since they made a field, show, field goal. A low scoring game again. Richfield not finding much offensive rhythm and Central not finding much either, but because Richfield is so quick, they don't have time for open looks. But we've been stuck in single digits for a little longer than I thought we would. Haynes out to Williams. Chereau gets around Barnes, but can't get the mid-range J. Chelsea Kizer gets the offensive board. Good hustle there by Kelsey. And Curtis is pushed, I believe, by Kaylee Adams. That is who the foul is on. St. Paul Central is in the penalty. We should note that. Richfield, I believe, needs to do a better job of boxing out in there. They're using their athletic ability and jumping versus doing the fundamentals of boxing out and then going to get the ball. Well, and Scott Staten mentioned one of his keys. He wants to get 50% more rebounds than Central does. McDonald, too strong for three, and Curtis can't save it in time. Good hustle there by 34 of Central. Stepped on the line. That's LaShondra Curtis. <coughs> Usually the first post off the bench, 5'11", senior center. <laughs> Schramm not giving up the three-point range, but still can't find the mark. Jump ball, and St. Paul Central with the possession arrow. And we're still stuck at 9'6". <laughs> Haynes is going to try a long pass to Chereau, and that's the danger. Hopefully Barnes will learn from that and get on the other side of the player. That was a nice run out by Chereau. Richfield gets possession again, though. And I spoke with Willie Taylor yesterday. He mentioned the full court press Central's used to running. Scott Stadium calls timeout with 9.13 left. You're not seeing Central pressing as much because Richfield just has too much speed to fall for the traps. Right. And for Richfield's end, you know, they're doing well on defense. They just can't find a player to get the ball in the basket. Yeah. They've had a lot of good looks, it's just not dropping. It's kind of what happened the first half of Staples Motley. It was a lot of shots were 10, 15 foot shots and they just weren't falling. Then Richfield pulled away and for a convincing 19 point win. So how do you think Richfield shakes off these nerves here early on? I mean, you're playing well defensively, but it's gotta be frustrating to have so many open looks not fall. Well, and I think, you know, that happened last year quite a few times. We'd have a close first half and then we'd come out in the second half and it's um, typically the conversations where we're getting the shots we want, we just gotta put them in. And uh, I, I believe that Scott would be really pleased with the shots they're getting. Wide open threes, layups, 10-footers uh, by Ford Washington. They're just not dropping right now. Richfield will inbound on their own side, and new player in for the Spartans, number Dominic 50. Dominic Hammonds. She's a junior. That young lady worked hard all summer on her game. I look for good things from her this year. I watched a little bit of that Staples-Motley game that 
Tony Gear uh, televised, and he, she was mentioned frequently. January, that's one way to nice. fix your offensive shooting problems. Excellent cut by January and a great feed by Barnes. <laughs> well, that ends the field goal drought for Richfield. And you'll notice that Hammonds will play good hard defense. She can play inside and outside because she's got that strong base. Williams can't hit the three. This and is their strength to get running. January will shovel pass out to Hammonds and she draws the foul. Hammonds providing a nice spark here. She ran the floor with January and she's a left-handed player so that left side comes natural to her. Okay, Hammonds, there you go. <laughs> You're in the bonus. You can go to the free throw line. <laughs> it's always a little comical to see the kids. You, they may not know the foul situation, and so they line up one way, and then they find out they have to line up the other way. I actually thought she was shooting, so I was a little surprised she didn't get two shots. Comes up empty, and Richfield one of five from the free throw line. Still haven't broken double digits yet. Let's go. There's Hammonds again. Barnes inside. Oh. had a good play for Adams. January can't save it, but Barnes, the pass was a little too off keel. She was wide open inside. And there's Bobby Beaver, number 33. Came off the bench last year as well for the Spartans. Chereau, 16-footer, nothing going in. Barnes got beat again by that long pass. Chapman will shoot a pair as she was fouled. The foul is on Lynn Bloom, her first personal. Chapman missed the, well, that's not well, a shooting foul. on the floor. Not in the bonus well. yet. Well, it went one way, it may as well go the other. <laughs> like I said, the players, they think oh, one thing and, well, yeah. no doubt this time she will shoot free throws. Yeah. Barnes let her get that ball too easy again and then had the position on her. Chapman averaging about 10 points a game. She is going to the University of Alabama, Birmingham to play Division I basketball there. That's a nice stroke from the free throw line. That's a decent free throw shot, but that's something Willie Taylor wants to work on with his group. In Chan Hassan's game, they were 12 of 25, which may have led to the overtime. Yeah dramatics that took place. Central, of course, won that game 69-65. And we have finally broken double digits. Chapman made both free throws. Chereau gets the poke, and it goes right to Madeline Kramer, who is running the scoreboard today. Normally, she's the public address announcer, but they didn't have enough bodies to run that today. But you gotta be versatile. January, almost threw it away, but it was deflected off of Central. Willie Taylor pleading otherwise, but. Yeah. I think it was the right call. <laughs> well, the coach is always gonna make a protest if the call doesn't go his way, right? Absolutely. January, through a double yes. team, gets her own rebound, but loses it to McDonald. That was just a tough play to get something out of. Haynes, almost losing yeah. the ball. A reach in by January, that's a pretty easy one to call. And St. Paul Central now in the bonus. The foul's on January, as you mentioned, her first personal foul. Haynes did not have a great game Saturday, just struggled all around for the Minutemen. And she leaves the possession empty. There's a little bit of Central's press. And if Richfield can clear it, well, 
Not able to. St. Paul Central perhaps getting comfortable enough to Richfield use the full court press. Right now. Well, when you haven't scored many field goals, it can be very tough to really get at ease with yourself. I mean, Chapman, yeah, that's yeah. a long two, and it bounces off the backboard and in. So Chapman working her way up to eight, which matches the Richfield total. But Richfield only down five, and Betsy McDonald will be called for a second personal foul. And Richfield, they've had a few chances here. It's going to be the six and seven. Well, I should say six. It's a one and one. But when you only make one of those free throws, very tough to stay in contention. Free throws are so important. Free throws and turnovers. It's like Ford Washington, who bricked her first two times, will try again. I'm a little surprised at the lineup by Statham here with, looks like Taylor Moore is gonna come in the game, I'm guessing for Bobby Beaver, but we'll see what happens. Well, won't be able to just yet because Ford Washington missed again. 0 for three now from the charity stripe and Richfield as a team, one of six. Hammond's long nice two, swish. She needs to do more of that. She's got a quick release. As you saw, the defender was right on her, and she still got a nice shot off. Jones can't get the finger roll, but saves it. Curtis, nice long two. She's too strong. Nice rebound by Lindblom. Get it out. Always love to see the smaller players going up there for the boards, and Beaver traveled. Yeah. She jumped before she got rid of yeah. well, passed it out, and now we'll see Taylor Moore. And Moore's hung around this team for a few years. What do you think, what does she bring off the bench? She brings some experience. She made some big shots for us last year in the state tournament. She'll rebound the ball well for us. And I, I really like her hustle plays. And she's a great kid. Almost one of the underrated players, if you will, Absolutely. on Richfield. <laughs> well, we can say this, both teams are now in double digits. <laughs> Here's Adams. Kaylee Adams can't put it in. And Chapman. Back again. No defender will catch her this time. Goodbye. We just got to start she, capitalizing on them layups. Chapman had a little bit of a wedge there, too. Almost like a kickoff to make sure nobody was going to catch her. And Richfield travels again. <laughs> Central getting a little bit of an edge now. Back in there. Her senior leadership and slow down the game a little bit and get some good shots. <clears throat> we mentioned field goal accuracy not going Richfield's way and one of six from the free throw line. But they've gone through adversity before. And that's one way to get around it. Jada Haynes will be called for a third personal foul as Haley Lindblom drew the charge. Nice defense by Lindblom. I think Coach Statham's looking for an intentional foul or fragrant oh, foul on that one. That's been a point of emphasis this year in all levels is shots to the head. I don't think it was an intentional. I don't think Haynes could see that Lindblom was behind her either. No. Of course, you'll still, you're, you're going to stand up for your team and, yeah, you know, make that pitch, but. That same kind of a shot two years ago broke my daughter's nose. <laughs> totally unintentional. <laughs> that was ugly. Yeah, we won't discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> Haynes with the steal. <laughs> and passing into Another traffic, that defense. was easy picking for Richfield. Kaylee Adams will try again, and Boy. she may almost be better off trying to pull up in those situations. There's January using her track-like speed. And travel again. That's three times, by my count, if not more, where she's had layup opportunities and they've come up empty. I mean, I don't know if that's her style, but what I've said, it would she, she would seem better off to be pulling up in those cases. Yeah, she's the five-footer. The central is playing to the rim. Ooh. 
Richfield just needs to settle down, go to their strengths, run some offense. Because they certainly are getting their hand on the ball in defense. Chapman again. Got it. Chapman becoming the anchor for the St. Paul Central offense like she was in Saturday's game against Duluth East. Nice pass by January. Got out a little trouble there. Swing the ball. Ford Washington. Too strong. But that's the first good look I've seen out of Richfield in a while. Chapman on a bounce pass to Kizzert. That's too strong. And Lindblom is fouled. I believe that's Chapman's second foul. And Lindblom will shoot two because Central, well, it's the double bonus situation. Haley needs to knock these free throws down. They need a spark. Four minutes to go in the half and and we know Seven she's points. we know she's capable of that as you mentioned 23 points I believe that was her season high against Kennedy yep. in the Richfield Holiday Classic couldn't have come at a better time well state tournament could have been timely too but yeah. <laughs> uh, that kind of guy they were on roll. They, they were thrilled to be there though oh That was the hardest thing coaching there was not to get caught up in the hype because Richfield, the community, supported well, us. And you're going to be one of the few coaches who has that distinction because after this year, the girls' tournament will no longer host the championship rounds at Target Center. And I'm happy about that. I would have preferred to stay at Williams Arena. It's awful well, hard to switch venues. That and not in your class in 3A. Hang on, McDonald for three. Whoa. Nope. Lynn Bloom, as you saw, made both free throws to get Richfield off that one for Mark. Because the field, especially in the 4A, had become so predictable over the years, attendance just sank because there were no compelling narratives, and so Target Center, to me, became a little too cavernous, a little too much yeah. for that kind of venue. Yeah. Williams and Mariucci would be better fits given their attendance numbers. January nearly gets a behind-the-back layup. Chereau with the rebound. <laughs> Lynn Bloom can't get the steal, but nice what tenacity all, all around on her end. Taking charges. And the more I see her play, the more I appreciate what Lynn Bloom provides. Yes. She doesn't look like much height-wise, but you cannot stop her. Listed at 5'5", five, five, and I'm wondering if that's a little generous. Yeah. <laughs> I've Probably. Stood next, I've stood next to her a few times, and that's a jump ball. Richfield There's another with the nice play arrow. by Haley Lindblom. I don't know if she's 5'5", five, five, but she with plays like on. she's 6'5". <laughs> with she's, the shoes on, of yeah. course. She's just a great kid. She's looking at uh, Concordia in Chicago and Hamlin here in the cities. And she's been accepted at both, and both of the coaches would love to have her. Taylor Moore is blocked by LaShondra Curtis. <laughs> well, if you like a pitcher's stool, we're getting the equivalent of one right now. Lindblom nice open for three. Haley. Boy, I don't know if we've made one tonight. Ford Washington will try, no. I think one three-pointer and that's it. Jump ball, St. Paul Central with the possession arrow and Lindblom hits the deck. And gets up as if she didn't hit anything. No. She'll give you 100% every night. No. I like the way 25 more stopped Chapman from that long court. She got him back and just kind of held her a little bit. Williams pass up a three to go to Chereau instead, and she can't get the 13-footer. The rebound by Kyla Adams, and she swarmed immediately. Finds Ford Washington for the escape. She's got numbers. Goes back to Adams. And Lindblom is not with the team. Her shoe is off target, and January can't get it. Taylor Moore gets the rebound, and Richfield still playing four on five. Lindblom I'm not still sure on the why back the refs end. didn't stop the game. Richfield had the ball. I think Lindblom was trying to get back there. 
Looks like she might have twisted her ankle a little bit. A little bit of a tweak. They'll take a look at it and they'll put in Dominique Hammonds. I think Lindblom was trying to get back to the court, but you're right, the officials could have stopped play. Right. But I'm not sure they saw it. I'm a little surprised at the two-man crew. We've been getting a lot of those for Central's games over here. Sometimes you get two, sometimes you get three. Hopefully it's not too serious and Lindblom can get back in there because yeah. you lose a huge defensive asset. Oh, and the way she's been playing tonight on defense, that has never been more true. January still looking for a shot and it's still not falling. On the floor. Just two field goals on the night for her. Scramble for the ball and we're still fighting for it. McDonald picks it up. Central on the run. Williams will shoot free throws. 50 Hammonds needs to step up right now. In Lynn Bloom's absence there, looks like Haley's over there walking a little bit. Maybe she can get it taped up and come back out in the second half. Williams, as we mentioned, in the open season high, 14 points in Saturday's win. 12 came in the second half, and she said it was thanks to a lot of transition plays. Being open down court, a lot of layups, and she hit a couple threes in the corner. I'm not sure she's 5'5 either. Very quiet individual, though. I talked to her afterwards. She makes both free throws, though, and that's something Richfield would like to do a little more of. She's a nice player, just goes about her business. She hit a big three earlier. And she gets a steal. McDonald. Uh, yeah, she does beat her coverage. I think. And we got to get the headband picked up, and the officials see that right away. That headband belongs to Lyric Williams. So Lindblom. Can't get back and it takes a little while. Headband falls and they stop play immediately. But the headband can't get back there. It's an I inanimate guess they object. I saw that right away. <laughs> it's an inanimate object, so uh, there's no willpower to be involved. Boy, we're just that was a strange looking three by Barnes and Hammond stepped on the line. Nice hustle there. We're just getting one look and done. I see January's trying to pull her team together out there. Talk to him, maybe settle him down a little bit. There's the senior leadership at work. January projected to pass 2,000 career points this year. She's already passed 2,000 career points. She already points. has. Yep. She did it last year in the final game of the state. That's right. They well, maybe 3,000's in the works. They had a nice ceremony for her. Not many 3,000 scores. No. But this is why I'm not a Richfield employee. <laughs> I think that's number two on January. And again, Central Coach in the bonus. Make a decision here. So one on one situation. There's 110 left. And do you chance it? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd sit her down and hold the ball and get one shot. She's too valuable a player to pick up a cheap three, third foul before the half. We're seeing Jada Jones getting some free throws in, and that is proving to be the difference so far. Central making a few more of them than Richfield has. And in a game where you're not getting many field goals, it is starting to influence the score. And getting the Asiya Smith is going to get called for the foul. She's back. Well, I'm not sure he said he pushed her, but he didn't call a foul. Maybe it was off of Smith. Looked like she it, got pushed right out of bounds. That's an interesting call, or Asiya, no call. Asiya Smith missed the last couple of games with a foot injury. Another jump ball, Richfield keeps it, but that's what, the 11th or 12th jump? <laughs> Seems like we've been getting nothing but jump balls this half. Too bad these schools can't play each other in the state tournament because this is a very exciting game. Very exciting. It's kind of like a chess match. He's trying to fill each other out here and see what's going on. There you go. Now that's she's got to put these in. That's going to send Kyla Adams to the line. And Adams with three points. I'd probably sub January out right now as they're going back on defense. 
Is this something that you'll discuss with Scott after the game? Nope. <laughs> So Scott you know your role now. Scott <laughs> knows basketball. <laughs> like, I'll be your backdoor coach, but yeah. uh, some of this stuff, you're on your own, right? <laughs> yeah. I'll help you out with grades and all that kind of stuff, and he knows basketball. Adams making the front end, and that's what Richfield needs to do, just get a few of these in. I mean, they're, they were one of six, as we told you, and since then, well, I jinxed them a little bit, but they're getting it up there. Nice and they're going to get more free throws. There. I only remember making three free throws out of about uh, 10 or 15 shots. Fouls on Jones are second. They're four of 10. Something like that. In January, we'll look to add to those numbers. There you go. And big chance here for Richfield to close the margin, you know, getting the offensive rebound. They're getting some trips to the free throw line because they're in the double bonus. And if you can't score with your shooting touch, this is one way to do it. Short. But January splits again. Should be white ball, Richfield's ball again. And I've noticed that out of January. We've talked about this, you know, struggle. She'll have the peaks and valleys. I mean, she'll get 21 points, but there are times where she is on target and tonight where she just can't seem to find any rhythm. And she draws another foul, and I believe that's the third on Jada Jones. And St. Paul Central doesn't have that deep of a bench. They did get a Sia Smith back, but we're going to have some strategy play out here in the second because players are racking up fouls yes. here. And January will get two more tries. There you go. That was a nice shot by her. Staples Motley, I think, just only had five points in the first half and ended up with 21 for the game. She has six now. Make it seven. seven. And again, Richfield has only played one game. Central has played six. So while Richfield has had plenty of time to practice, they don't have a whole lot of knowledge playing with each other as a team against a top 10 team like Central. Jess has got to be careful here and not pick up her third foul. And the basketball rendition of Hot Potato continues. 20 seconds left. Central will hope for the final shot. And like you said, January's got to be careful here. Richfield in general doesn't want to foul because that's two free throws automatically. Here's McDonald. Oh. And there's the foul, the foul but it's on, on Central. And that'll drive a Coach huge. Taylor nuts. Well, I'm sure fouls on your end drove you nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you would have taken January out about 50 seconds ago. Yeah. That was a little too close a couple of those. But if you took her out, she couldn't score from the free throw line. You're right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> but I'd take that chance. Well, it's a lot of risk taking at coaching and you're fortunately at a level here. January's starting to make the free throws yeah. now where it's not like Cheryl Reeve with the Minnesota Lynx. No. Your decisions are not going to be scrutinized as heavily. No. As get, these are high school kids. They need to be kids, even oh. though they're very good basketball players. Yeah, this but might how be about the, this? This uh, might be the spark for January. Sometimes and, you get there and make a couple free throws. And that's a four-point swing to end the first half. You know, Central couldn't get a shot off. They foul January. She makes both free throws. And Richfield looking at double-digit deficit not too long ago. In the last minute, they clawed to 22-18, and that has to be a morale booster here in oh, the intermission. Absolutely, and that's what Coach Statham's going to talk about is making their free throws and just settling down on offense a little bit. I, I believe he's probably really pleased with his defense. He's gotten a lot of turnovers. It's just capitalizing on them. Well, we'll pause for a few minutes ourselves because I need to settle down and catch my breath after a crazy first half. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on TSB Television. Welcome back to St. Paul Central High School as TSB Television continues its coverage of high school girls basketball. I'm Mike Peden and Leanne Wise will rejoin me shortly up in the booth as we call the St. Paul Central Richfield Battle of Top 10 Teams. St. Paul Central number five in Class 4A, Richfield number one in Class 3A. St. Paul Central leads 22 to 18. 
in the basketball the equivalent of a pitcher's duel. A lot of defense by both teams, preventing a lot of open looks. It's been a very tough battle to find any kind of solid shot. Shade Chapman leads all scores with 12 points. Sat out a few minutes of the first half with two fouls. But that's about it for notables. On Richfield's end, similar story. Jessica January has nine points, but just a pair of field goals. But did some damage from the free throw line late, including two free throws with seven tenths of a second on the clock. And as Leanne Wise, the former Richfield head coach, comes back up here and joins us again. Adjustments for these teams? What do you think we should see? I think one, I think Scott's going to have him come out and run a couple offensive sets, try and get some good shots. You remember the one play in the first half where January had a nice cut to the basket and got a pass from the wing? I think that was about their best offensive play I saw. They're getting the skills, they're just not, or the steals, they're just not making the buckets. And we've seen so much tenacity, so much stinginess from both sides on defense. You're not seeing many half court sets either way. No. And I think Coach Statham's got to be pleased with their defense right now. It's just making the transition buckets and getting them ahead. Really, if they make their free throws, they're probably ahead by six or seven. And Central, they're clean up at, they've got to clean up a little bit because uh, they, they're they going to have to watch the foul situation now, for one. And two, that allowed Richfield to reel in that deficit. We talked about a four-point swing potentially at the end when Central couldn't get a shot off. They foul on the rebound. January makes a pair of free throws and it's a four point game. And another steal by Richfield. Good solid defense there. And they can make it a one point game with the three pointer. I'm a little surprised Haynes is in there with the three fouls but Coach Taylor knows what he's doing. He's won two state titles. Nice. nice and that's going to be Chapman's third. See who they call this on. If it's Chapman I believe that's her third. Nope. Raina Sherelle, that's her second. Tough to tell from this vantage point, but that will give Leah Barnes a pair of free throws. She has yet to score. Really hasn't been a factor on offense tonight. And a lane violation, so. January was up beyond the three or the free throw line extended. I believe she was asking for something from Beaver and she was too far down. Back when I played, you could be down there. That was one of our plays off of the free throws. So Barnes will have to settle for a split and January will have uh, maybe hopefully her only blooper of the season. <laughs> that would be nice. But I like seeing Barnes make both of them. That's a good sign for Richfield. Looks like Barnes is very active in there on defense, preventing any drives, and then recovering nicely. Well, there's no defensive three-second call at this level. They've talked about putting in the WNBA yeah. in anticipation of Brittany Griner, but that's another story for another yeah. broadcast. <laughs> Here's Lyric Williams and a foul before the drive attempt. It's on Shram. Lynn Bloom not on the floor. I saw her hopping on one heel, and she still doesn't have her shoe on as they try to tape up the ankle. And today, Chapman, that's the second time they've run that play, and the second time it's successful. It's actually not her ankle, it's her uh, calf muscle. Yeah, the that's right. She seems it is. to think that she might have tore it. I was talking to her mom. So she wanted to go back in, but the trainer said no. So Lynn Bloom will not return. Most That's going to be a loss for Richfield. And you hope that it's not a serious issue for Lindblom just because of Richfield's schedule. We, we talked about it. Here's Chereau running the same play as Chapman and running the low block on the left side and is paying off. Central up to seven points again with their lead. January just seems out of sync right now. Throwing floater passes. I'd like to see her get to the rim, 
get some more free throws and take Richfield on her back. She's very capable of that. And Ford Washington having a hard time. Does get the pass in, but that was a turnover in the making there. January tried to get the poke and look out. What you just saw was probably what it was like driving on the roads a couple of days ago. A mess. <laughs> McDonald will try to clean it up. Bullseye. And after what happened at the end of the first half, this is exactly what St. Paul Central needs. Yeah. Coach Tatum's going to get a timeout here and set something up. He has two remaining, but St. Paul Central now back up to 10, starting the second half on a 7-1 run. So Richfield does not have Lindblom. You mentioned how big of a loss that is. What does that mean for the Spartans? How do you compensate? That's going to be a tough, skills. a tough role for Statham to find somebody to take her place right now. She did a lot of hustle plays, probably tied the ball up two or three times in the first half, and uh, she's just a spark plug, and they're going to miss her in there. What were some things you told your players over the years, you know, being in these situations where you were trailing or maybe things weren't going so well? How did you keep them? focused on the task. We talked a lot last year about team and relying on our team. Last year certainly wasn't the most athletic or best team I had coached at Richfield, but they were the most efficient and got along and played great team ball. We always had a goal of under 15 turnovers and over 15 assists. And a lot of games, probably 75% of them, we hit those goals. This team looks a little ragged right now. It's a, early in the season. I'd like to see January, like I said, put them on her back for a few times down the floor, set up some picks for her. And this is only their second game again, yeah. so the timing with their passing and their playmaking may not be at 100% the way Central, you know, they've had six games to yeah. pick up on their identity. And they had a close game with Chan Hassan, as you know, and won in overtime, so they've played tight ball games. Richfield's still learning what each other's about out here. And they had won another tight one with Woodbury, and that was a theme Willie Taylor expressed to me in the games I covered. He said previous teams of his, because he had a couple of down years after winning the state title, and Chapman gets a little blooper. And Leah Barnes has a nice defensive play by her, but she's got to step up here. She got a lot of minutes last year, has a lot of experience, and she can't play like she's a sophomore. She needs to step up and start playing. Right now, I think they're missing. They had uh, Bree Guyton last year was a strong inside presence. And Leah needs to step up and do that for them. Ford Washington can't get the 15-footer. And a foul is called on Richfield. It's on Schramm. And to finish up on Central's point, he said he had a couple of down years. In tight situations, he said previous Central teams he's had would have lost those games. Now they're winning the close games because they have the experience, they have some talent, and that's why they got a lot of respect early in the season, and they're still getting that respect in the rankings. Yep. <coughs> I like the pressure that Richfield's putting on right now. He's, they're gonna make them earn their buckets. But the danger of a full court press is you can is leave that. your opponent open on the other end, and Raina Chiro will reap the benefit of that risk. Ford Washington and nice one. Play. That's what I'm talking about there. January got the rebound, pushed it up the floor, and Ford Washington made the bucket. Now we got to make this free throw and come back out in the pressure. Hammond's got to learn from her mistake last time. She can't get beat in the back court. Ford Washington just one of four from the free throw line, though. As mentioned, Richfield left a few points early, made up for it late in the second, but still not finding it. Oh. And Jessica January will be called for her third personal foul. Much to her disbelief. Boy, that's a tough call for Richfield. And 
and Statham going to keep her in. <laughs> Jess has just got to be smart now. She's a senior. She understands her importance on this team. and She's got to be smart on defense. Willie Taylor called January the best point guard in the state. And now she'll have a chance to prove it. Lyric Williams can't get the runner. And nice box out there by Hammond. Somebody's got to help her out. She's trapped by a double team, though, but nice. finds Ford Washington on the escape. Ford Washington, 17-footer. No good, but Adams up. with the offensive rebound. And a traveling violation. Called traveling. I think that could have been a jump ball or traveling, but he chose to call it traveling. There was a little contact with the ball, but I don't know if it was enough for the officials to consider it simultaneous possession. This is really a key point in the game for Richfield. They can't let them get up by any more than 10. Two undefeated teams, only one will stay that way. And Lyric Williams draws the foul on Kyla Adams. She had five points in the first half. And Williams was put in originally to spell Jada Jones, who was out with a hamstring injury, so she couldn't start. And Willie told me about Lyric Williams. She worked hard over the summer to prove that she belonged in the starting five. But she bricks both free throws, and Curtis couldn't haul in the rebound. And they're going to oh keep it here. Huh. Looks like he's getting some help from his partner. Oh, she's got a bloody nose. I don't know about you, but I saw that go off of Black pretty clearly. I thought it went off of Curtis myself. Kaylee Adams going in as Kyla Adams looks like her nose or her mouth, hard to tell, but that has to be addressed, of course, for safety reasons. A very physical game and another foul's called. And it's on Kaylee Adams and Richfield in a bit of a bind here, only one foul left to give. Curtis on the inbound play and in. That's her first field goal, and Willie Taylor called her the best low block score for Central, but again, the defense has been so stingy most of the time, she hasn't had many opportunities. Sierra Ford Washington can't weave around. Leah Barnes with the offensive board. Hammonds Hammond. with her left hand nice switch. Shot. Oh, it's, they got to play some defense now. The lefty answers back. She has four. As we said before, the foul situation will be extrapolated and become a big part of this defensive or the strategical assessment <laughs> as they start piling up here. January went to Ford Washington. Adams. That's a jump ball. It will stay with Richfield. Here's Chelsea Kidzer coming in for the Minutemen. 13.08 remaining in the second half. Barnes draws a foul. That was a nice move by Barnes. See her put in these free throws. The foul's on Chapman, her third. And Jessica January standing well behind the free throw line this time. She's learned. <laughs> Coach well, Statham has too. Nice free throw by Barnes. Well, if, if I recall, January's, a, I think, if not up there at, at the valedictorian spot or close to it in her class. She's number two in her class. 
in all honors. In other words, she's a quick learner. Yes. In and out of the classroom, she's an exceptional athlete. Barnes makes both. That brings her total up to three. Eight point game, 33-25. They really need to limit Central to one shot here on this and get the ball back. Jada Jones. Did she draw the foul? No. But Central will inbound it. Boy. Looked like she threw it right out of bounds. Richfield may have deflected the shot attempt. But it can be tough to see, see just where exactly the ball goes. McDonald was ready for a three, but January is too close. Point guard on point guard. <laughs> a battle of IQ, really. McDonald considered one of the best players uh, Willie Taylor's ever had to coach. And January, oh. we've talked about number two in her class and a very high IQ on the floor. Yes. Nice move to the bucket. And St. Paul go. Central, they forgot she was there. And she just weaved through the hole. Great athletic ability there by Jess and finished. That's why she's going to DePaul. Yes. And Richfield will get another try here. Like you said, one and done. And that's big They're when you have. the ball up the floor. Ford Washington, uh, she has not nice found rebound. her rhythm tonight. And McDonald picks it up. Ford Washington, she'll want to put this game behind her. McDonald pulls up, and that's off the heel. And Leah Barnes will be called for her third personal foul, and now Richfield out of fouls to give. Again, Richfield's going for those rebounds. They're not boxing out. If Leah would have turned and boxed out her player, I think she could have easily got that rebound without the foul. Here's Schramm and Beaver for L Richfield. Again, Lynn Bloom not available with the calf injury. Richfield needs Schramm to hit a three. Get some more and momentum now, going. A and now you're going to have to be a little more careful here. Curtis, that's short. Haynes with the offensive rebound. And Raina Chereau, that's the danger of second chances. And Raina Chereau cleaned up on a lot of those last Tuesday in the win over Chanhassen. And Beaver's will stay with Richfield. Struggle guarding Chapman. I don't know how long Coach Statham can go with that matchup. And he doesn't have many options at the center position. Barnes being it, the tallest player on the team. Schramm thought about a three. Instead, it will go to Adams. Off the mark, but Beaver with the offensive rebound. Nice and she rebound by Beaver. Replicates what Chereau did. Now she needs to play some defense. She must have heard you. Oh. And a foul is called. Who's it on? It's Every on Ford Washington. Argued either way. And Central in the bonus now. And as we talked about, fouling is going to be <coughs> Examine carefully here. January has three fouls. Chereau has three. Chapman is three for Central. Jada Haynes is three. You have Leah Barnes with three. We may find a few reserves coming in before the game's out. I think the game's going to be decided on free throws. Who can make theirs? Kissard in a one on one situation. And she gets on the board. Blitz. Beaver. Nice Baseline J is Beaver. good. Not a huge crowd, certainly not the 42 bus loads, but the Richfield fans in attendance enjoying what they're seeing now. Jada Haynes had an open layup but came up short. And Rainer Chereau left open and she can't put it down. And no foul call that oh. goes to Richfield. This is getting very, very wow. physical out there. And Chereau took a black eye. She got hit in the face in Saturday's game with Duluth East, and she might have a couple of bruises after this one. You got people all over the floor, and no fouls being called. This is getting very aggressive. <laughs> the fans are getting loud, too. Like you said, there's a good crowd here tonight watching two good teams play.
And the Richfield bench cheering on their brethren on the floor. January. Pulls up for three. That would have been big. Jada Haynes loses nice the ball. Rebound. And oh. Beaver fouls Chiro. And that will put the junior to the free throw line. Chiro getting looked at by a lot of Division I schools for her aggression on both ends of the floor, but one of the hobbies she would like to take part of sometime is snowboarding. Ah, basketball and snowboarding don't go well together. Well, there's plenty of snow yeah. for her to try it out if she wants over the winter break. I think Coach Taylor maybe would rather have her do knitting or something a little safer. <laughs> I always told my players, no skiing, snowboarding, anything like that. Well, it'd be, it'd be kind of hard for them to ski since that season overlaps with basketball. Yeah. <gasps> but Chereau, very aggressive on the offensive end, and when she got her career high last week against Chan Asson, a lot of it was thanks to putbacks. She's a nice player. That was a nice free throw. She's got a nice shot, and she's aggressive inside. She's got a big frame. And Chereau has really developed over the years to become a compliment to Shade Chapman inside. Uh, that, that takes the pressure off the UAB recruits, and that's going to give Central an anchor next year when Chapman graduates. Chereau makes both free throws here. That brings her up to eight, and it's a seven-point game, and another timeout is called. This time it's from St. Paul Central. It's their first time out. Richfield's just hanging around. 10-28, it's a seven point game and we're seeing a little more offense now. I think they look back on this game, win or lose, and they're going to really talk about their offensive sets and what kind of shots they're getting. And then of course the rebounding. We're just not doing the fundamental things right now with the rebounding, boxing out first and then going to get the ball. And Central's done a great job on Jess. Usually she's going at it with two players on her and that's causing her a little bit of stress trying to get to the rim. <clears throat> and I have to imagine, especially as when we get to the uh, holiday tournament at the end of the month, I think Ritual will be a little more settled in with each other. Again, this is only their second game. Central has played their seventh game already. Well, they've got and, a tough stretch coming up where and, they play Hill Murray on a Wednesday night. I, I believe Shakopee on a Thursday and then Simley on Friday. Or I'm, uh, maybe it's Waconia, but they have three games in a row. Three good contests for them, and that's really going to see what kind of team they are. Are they resilient? Can they fight through some of the early season getting to know each other kind of situations? And St. Paul Central closes out the month with a tough schedule. They'll be playing the late conference teams at Hopkins. So they'll get a look at Hopkins, Eden Prairie, and I believe Minnetonka. Month, Chereau with the steal. Hopkins the favorite to win in 4A, but they lost one of their players, T.T. Starks, to an ACL injury, and that's going to bring the field a little closer. Chapman looked like she was going to take a three for a second, but thought wiser, at least from that range. It will stay with Central. I've said it earlier in the game, this is a really key spot for Richfield now. They can't let it get up to double digits with their foul trouble and their bench strength right now. St. Paul Central still has three fouls to give. Chapman tries the turnaround, and the foul comes late. It's on Kaylee Adams, and Chapman goes to the free throw line. This is what you talked about. Like I said earlier, I think free throws are going to be big. Chapman with 14 points now leading all scorers. 
There she got splits the here. Her season high came on Saturday when she put in 17. Can't get trapped over there. January for three. No. Got to be white ball. That's a good call. He was right on top of it. And you see January trying to get her team involved and had an open look, but again, the shot's just not falling. So she'll try a fadeaway instead. That comes up too strong, and Sherelle picked it up, but she loses the ball to Kyla Adams. And Ford Washington can't get the bounce. Nice rebound. And one, Kyla Adams. That's Richfield not pocket. giving up. I mean, they've had plenty of reasons, but I, when you've got the senior leadership of January and coming off their high from a year ago, I don't think they're gonna be too flustered by missing a few shots. They've all been down before. It's what they're gonna do now. This, this kind of is a great early season test for them. They're not folding even though their shots aren't falling. They keep fighting. Well, and I know Richfield's going to get the tough test. They usually do at that holiday tournament. We'll have that for you at the end of the month. I think they start out with Cambridge Isani. Yep. And a three-point play is complete. And, of course, whoever they play on Friday will be determined by how the first day goes. But It may be a matchup again, Kennedy and Richfield, which we saw last year. Lyric Williams can't go coast to coast in January with the big rebound. Richfield can make this a one possession game. Somebody's Barnes got to back step in. up. If they're going to double team Jess, somebody's got to step up. Central got possession. McDonald tried nice. to shovel pass to Chapman, but it's picked off. January with one-on-one -on, -one on Jada Jones, nice. and that's one way to score. Excellent double pump there by January. A great reach speed out by Ford Washington. When she can get out those one-on-one -on -one situations, she has better odds. And Chapman can't get the bounce. Nice box out in there. Now slow it down. Don't throw the ball away. January will slow it down. There you go. Good decision by January. Again, that senior leadership. Well, as you said, she's a quick learner. <laughs> Three-point ball game. Need to get a good shot here. Three-pointer ties it, but you don't need it, obviously, with 8.03 to go. And Scott Statham. Out. It, an interesting decision, though, because now he only has one left. Yeah. And he may need that later on. We'll keep that in mind though, 7.59 left, but you're right, it's at a critical time here where Richfield, they haven't led this game, at least not to my knowledge. No, and that's why I'd like to see January pull the ball out, conserve the timeout, and set something up. She's a senior leader out there. She's been playing varsity since seventh grade. She can pull it out and preserve it. I, I rarely use timeouts. I always like to save them at the end for a game such as this where you may need it. And don't you enjoy just being able to <laughs> decipher and just break down and analyze all these coaching moves that you, you no longer have to worry about it? Yes, because none of them matter up here. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the timeout call, but you're right. If Richfield needs them later, they may not be able to stop the clock. There's a lot of time left in this ball game. Keeping their emotions <laughs> intact will be very important for Richfield. Well, and that's the thing. It could go any way. You know, this whole conversation could be proven moot in a few minutes. And Richfield throws it away. Chapman left alone. Goodbye. And she matches her season high. They are really missing Lindblom right now. Having that third guard that can handle the ball. And McDonald bumps January. Central had a few to give, but that's going to be number three on the point guard going to St. Cloud State. And Central with one foul left to give, but... 
Now another player you have to watch for. McDonald, Chapman, Jones, and Chiro all have three fouls for Central. And we talked about Richfield and their players with three, and they January include January and Barnes. Barnes. January big shot. finally makes the three-pointer. That may be just what they need to get going here. Up to 16 points, you wouldn't know it. Traveling violation on Jada Jones. What do I know? That timeout looks like it was pretty effective for Coach State. I mean, uh, the it looks brilliant Spartan. now, doesn't yeah. it? Of course, had it gone the other way, it would have looked foolish. <laughs> Great Six sitting up here second guessing everything. Six to one, half a dozen on the other, right? Well, January, as we mentioned, up to 16. You wouldn't know it from her game tonight, but like you said, struggled against Stables. Motley worked yep. her way up to 21, so she's going to keep on fighting and fighting, and it will show on the scoreboard. Well, January's not going to slip, not with her gymnastics training. January pulls up. No. But Adams with the rebound, but she loses the handle. Off of Black, nice hustle play by Barnes. She got it off McDonald. 6.50 to go. Now what? A technical foul? Oh, looks like he's disagreeing with it. I don't know how he can. The one ref was standing right there. Boy. <laughs> Tough call. Especially coming from half court on that call. Next play though, right? <laughs> That's what most coaches tell their players. Yep. And you were no different. McDonald, nope. that would have been a huge counter. Oh, she's got to give it up. And McDonald does have the three point shot. Used That's a it. good play by Richfield. They got the rebound. Now they need some movement. And they're slowing down. They know Central has too much speed to really drive. Yikes. That's a tough pass by January right through Ford Washington's legs. And St. Paul Central will call timeout here with 6.16 left. And Richfield. It's a fine job getting back in this game, but it seems like they're giving every opportunity for Central to prevent them from winning this game. Yeah. Going over that, uh, break the tie and take their first lead. That shot, three-point shot by January, that was a huge shot. And then we come back down and turn the ball over. Again, what we're seeing out of Richfield, though, will be more polished as the season oh. goes on, as they get more time to play with each other. That's something you see a lot of, and Central was making those same miscues in their first weekend when I went over there to Hamlet. It, no doubt, by the time the holiday tournament comes around, Richfield's going to look totally different than they do you, right now. You can practice, but there's a camp, and I'm among them, that says you just cannot replace game experience with simulated practices. Oh. You are totally correct on that. I hated layoffs. <laughs> Having a week layoff. So do the players. Yeah. McDonald losing the handle. Jones recovers. And Central can't lay back here. They're up by two, but it's a danger zone of sorts. I mean, there's no shot clock, but if you lay back too much, you may give up a chance and let Richfield work the way back in it. So Central, they can't hang on to the ball for five minutes. That's not no. gonna work. They need to stay aggressive. Well, nice. they do, but Chiro off touch on the shot and Chapman drawing the foul. That's not what Richfield wanted. Boy, I think he called that on January. That's gonna be her fourth foul if he did. Yes. He did. What does Scott Statham do now? Boy. That is a tough call. A little under six minutes to go. I know Jess is saying I'm fine. Boy, again, free throws. And Schramm will go in for January. And that will hurt Richfield. But Chapman missed the front end, so Central leaving the door open here. Chapman oh. bricks both. Chereau rips it away, but she had no shot no. there. So court spacing, that's often a 
an issue you see with players not knowing where they are in relation to the basket. And that was a good no call by the ref. This is huge if McKenzie can hit that. Nope. We're seeing it go both ways. Richfield oh. will get possession now. <laughs> Central turning it over. Richfield turns it over. Shots not going in. And it's still a two-point game. This is a classic state tournament game where <laughs> nothing seems to work when you have two evenly matched teams. No. We haven't had that the last few years, of course. But in those tough 4A matchups, and even some of the smaller schools, that's what often happens. Ford oh. Washington Big finally shot by Ford Washington. breaks through. That's her first field goal, and we're tied at 41. Richfield needed that one. Sears got to step up, too. We talked about January in her seat and her leadership. Well, and it's not for a lack of trying. Ford Washington getting a lot of shots up, but that's the first to go through the net. That's McDonald travels, and that was the right call. Keep in mind, January is still not on the floor. And they're holding their own. This buys some time this, for Richfield. This is a game where nothing is going to form, apparently. But that's what happens. That's what separates winners from losers. The ability to adjust and ad lib in adverse situations. Here's Hammond. Dom. Nice rebound. Boy. Too strong, but Barnes on. No. And we're seeing Retries. the same things from that Central committed on Tuesday. Williams pulls up. That was deflected. There he goes. Ford Washington oh. with the rebound, but on those second chances, Richfield often in haste trying to get a shot up instead of pulling back, kind of relaxing a little bit. There's a good call in there. 34 was trying to. And that's push on LaShondra Barnes. Curtis. That's going to be her third. And Central out of fouls to give now. Looks like they'll be in the bonus now, too. They will be from this point on. And January going back in now. She has four. St. Paul Central with five players at three. <laughs> Overtime not out of the question. No. But to elaborate on what I mentioned, Richfield on these second chances, they're in such a hurry to get a shot up that they don't have time to get a good poise look off. Oh. And we saw Central do the same thing against Chanassen. That's what they need. Yeah. Swish! That may be the biggest basket for Dominic Cammons in the early part of the season. I told you, that young lady worked hard all summer long. She was over at my school shooting every day. LaShondra Curtis can't get the kiss off the glass, and we're going Richfield's way. Now we need some composure from Richfield. They got a two-point lead. They need a good shot. But like we said just a couple minutes ago, now the situation tilts in their direction. Yep. Two-point lead at this stage of the game. Dangerous here especially since they're in the penalty now. Oh. Cherell with the steal, one on one. No, foul. And it's on Ford Washington. See, I don't understand that call. The ref coming in from half court to make the call when the other ref is right there underneath. That used to frustrate me as a coach. I'm sure it's frustrating Scott Statham. And I know Willie Taylor's had his share of frustrations over similar calls that didn't go his way. Absolutely. So here's the Aspiring snowboarder. Yeah. Gonna try to drift in a few points for Central. One thing's for sure, it's gonna be noisy for the last three minutes and 49 seconds. As I said early, this is a nice crowd by both teams. You can tell that this is a big game for girls basketball and for uh, Central and Richfield. Shiro makes both, we're tied at 43. Can't play hesitant here. You got to go and attack. Well, St. Paul Central using the full court press to their advantage. McDonald, she draws the foul. That's two turnovers on Richfield in a row. Can't get it over half court. And they were caused by Central's full court press. Central's doing a nice job getting their hands up on and those overhead passes and deflecting them. And this is where the lack of timeouts could be an issue for Scott Staten because if he had a few more, he could hauling the troops kind of yeah. settle them down with his full court He's now he has save. to figure out when to use it mcdonald gives central the lead this is her first trip to the free throw line and suddenly central's hitting all their free throws which are big 
Every possession big now. But again, Central has to be. got to bring the ball up the floor. Central has to be careful themselves because they are also in the penalty. January, holy cow! Wow, that was impressive. That's a classic January basket, right? I think they easily could have called a foul on that as well, but she's so deceiving with her athletic ability. I didn't see any touch, but no. again, oh. that's January at work, but they leave Chereau open on the other end. That was too easy. Nice ball movement there by Central, though, recognizing that she had broken out free. Chereau with 12. And once again, January not bringing the ball up floor. You don't see that in college or the WNBA, I'll say that. And Trina Chereau, she knew a turnover was right in her grasp and she let it go. Barnes has got to catch that ball. That's a good pass inside, they pulled him out. Both teams are playing really well right now. They're seeing what, the open player. What makes you think uh, that Richfield isn't using January to bring the ball up floor? Why do you think they're trying other players here? Because they've turned the ball over twice and Jess handles the ball so well. Limit your wrists. This is a big shot for Dom. Oh. Off the mark. I still like the look. 47-45. That could have been a foul. Easily could have been a foul. Chereau. Wow. And that, I don't know if Barnes should have pursued that ball. Again, tough to tell off those boards. Yeah. And she might have touched it. That's why she went for it. But from our vantage point, if she let it go, Richfield gets a dead ball rebound. Yeah. You got to like the hustle, though. And I like the way Central's going right at them. They're not trying to hold the ball. They're being aggressive. Well, as you said, Central used to this situation. They had to sweat one out with Chanhass, and they were down by 10 in that contest. And that's not what Richfield wanted to do. That's four on Ford Washington. With 2.23 to go, and I don't think State is in a position where he can substitute anybody now. No. He's gonna have to stay with this five, I think, looking at his bench. Curtis to shoot two. But she is not the best of free throw shooters, and once again, Central with these opportunities to extend the lead to two possessions, and they're going to leave the door open once more. Most likely. Of course, we've seen some crazy things happen off rebounds. Recoil, always unpredictable. That's why boxing out is so important. Short. Oh. Here's a big, a big three. Bullseye! Betsy McDonald. That was a big three point. She shot that well. Here's Ford a big Washington. shot by Ford Swish. Washington. Still plenty of time here and again yeah. Central can't lay back with two minutes to go. They do have the benefit of being in the double bonus so they could draw a foul or McDonald will drive and she does draw the foul. And that's number four on Kyla Adams. Central Rich. taking advantage of Richfield's defensive lapses here and they're drawing fouls i still like central's aggressive to the basket they're taking it to them they're not holding back or waiting on anybody <laughs> mcdonald up to 13 points she is the team's leading score and central have been playing very smart basketball on the defensive end as well they haven't been giving up many fouls here. And you've got Chapman for the offensive rebound, three-point play, Again, and Central up by six. And they got it back up. Central's doing a great job on boxing out. Chapman with a new season high, 19 points. Got to keep moving the ball. Over. And Richfield's got to play a little hurry up here. There's still time, but they need to get 
Six points in a hurry, and that's not going to get it done. Jump ball, but that's not going to do Richfield any good no. because Central has Going the possession Central. arrow. And now Central can kill clock. They may have to start falling. I'm. <laughs> They've got all their good free throw shooters in there for Central right now. Coach Taylor smart enough to know this could become a free throw shooting contest. And the problem is Fort Washington in January have four fouls, so they can't utilize the strategy. Central can lay back here. Yep. And Richfield, they're going to try to get the steal, but. You got to have somebody up there that can foul. Fort Washington can't foul. Here's where Hammond needs to foul. Less than a minute to go. Without grabbing the jersey. Effectively here, though, with a six-point margin, if Jones makes one, this may give Central the win. Could quickly turn into a three-possession game. Coach Statham may look just to substitute to foul. With both Ford Washington in January, with four fouls, they can't do it. Jones makes one of two. And St. Paul Central up by seven with 54 seconds left. And again, because Richfield only has one timeout left, if they make a basket here, they can only stop the clock once if they so choose. Oh. January with a clean strip. Lyric Williams left alone. That will do it. That may have just done it. <coughs> Willie Taylor's going to call timeout. He had three left, and it, it does stop the clock, but I think you're seeing Central's advantage play out here and having that experience. They went yep. through this once before, as we've talked about with Shannon. Richfield had a similar encounter, but that was in the first half against Staples yeah. Motley. Nothing this close against Staples Motley. The second half, they came out and blew them away. Ended up winning by 19. But this is a great learning opportunity for Richfield. I know Statham, they'll be watching the film tomorrow, picking out what they could have done better and looking at the strengths. Their first half defense was exceptional. And I, I really think the key was Lindblom going out. And we don't know how long she's out for, and that's something Richfield will ha may have to adapt to if this is a long-term injury. Another thing to keep in mind, we always are talking big picture in high school. This game will not have a huge implication on section seedings. No. It's a, because they're in different classes. <coughs> and this early in the season, in Richfield's case, we talked about it a lot with the other teams who have a few more games under their belt. It's getting the seasoning. Yes. And for Richfield, this is what it's about. Just getting the seasoning. You drop a few games now. It, it's not going to hurt you later. De La Salle no. dropped the first two games of the year. And, and they've they historically struggled in the years they won the state tournament in terms of starts. And January is going to get fouled. That stops the basket, but it also stops the clock. Chapman may have been wiser to let that one go. Give her the two points and move on. Oh, but like you say, aggressiveness, the instinct is stop the basket, make the murder for the free throw line. But in that situation, you see that play out sometimes. Teams will give up the lane and make mm. you try to play the foul and chase game. And certainly a lot of eyes are going to be on January. As you mentioned, first two games have been a similar story for her. She's had a few big plays, but overall just not finding the basket the way she would like to. I think they might be working a lot on shooting the next few days. She leaves both empty, and Chapman's going to get a pair. And for Central, again, not favored to win the Class 4A title at this point, but... They keep racking up wins like this, as it looks like they're going to do here against these high-quality teams. It's not going to be long before they get the radar in their direction. They're a good quality team. They've got height. They've got guard play. They hit a few threes that were at key times in the game. I really like what Coach Taylor's doing with his kids. 
And it looks like they know how to finish a game. They've had a Woodbury game, Chan Hassan game, and now Richfield game. But with two minutes to go, it was a two-point game. All and W's for Central. Chapman bumps up her total to 21, and Central can breathe a, breathe a sigh of relief now. January, that's a microcosm of her day. And the crowd falls silent. Yeah. I think as they say, you can stick a fork in this one, it's done. Don Meredith had another line for it. It was believed, turn out the lights, the party's over. <laughs> Different sport though. Yeah. Whatever metaphor you wish to use, St. Paul Central will stay undefeated and Richfield will fall the one and one. Like you said, it was a couple minutes ago, just a two point game, but Central's poise and this experience from playing these other games manifesting in these final few minutes. And I know Coach Statham will learn from this and so will his players. They had some moments of brilliance and then some moments of lapses and I remember the two turnovers in a row not getting the ball over half court when it was a tie ball game. I think that really hurt. And he'll talk about that. And don't forget Lynn Bloom going out with a calf injury. Who knows how that impacted this game because she was staunch on defense in the first half. Natalie Meeks Johnson in the game. And St. Paul Central will let this one go and a behind the back layup for Kaylee Adams, but of little consolation in the final outcome. St. Paul Central comes out with a 58-49 win and like you said, it came down to poise. Richfield lost it in the second half. Central held on to theirs, played a smarter second half game and that's why they're now 7-0. That's absolutely why they didn't go. Like we talked about the senior leadership there, they got ahead, but then they, couldn't hold it and Central with their experience already this year was able to capitalize and they stayed aggressive. You gotta give Coach Taylor credit. They kept going to the basket. I think many coaches in that situation maybe would have pulled it out, but he kept attacking and they went to the free throw line. I believe they had a stretch of making four in a row down there. And that's Willie Taylor's style. He's always an aggressive coach using the speed to his advantage, but very exciting game and I'm, it'll be fun to see how, how these teams uh, plunge ahead in their schedule. Yeah, I'll be watching both of them. Well, we'll try to get a word with Central senior leadership in a moment. They win 58-49. You're watching high school girls basketball. Mike Bean in here with Central's player of the games, Shade Chapman, and Betsy McDonald, the actual player of the game. Not games, but in your case today, you've had two season highs now on back-to-back -back nights. Uh, went up to 21 this time. Uh, how tough was Richfield? Um, they were actually pretty tough. We let them come back, and we just had to take it to our own hands and not get down because we were tied at one point, so we had to just take the lead. What we noticed in the second half, Central seemed more poised and played a much smarter defense in the second half. They weren't committing many fouls and you were able to uh, force Richfield into a half step behind most of the time and get free throws. Well, we realized in the first half we had 14 turnovers and usually we only average 16 per game. So we know we had to slow down and make our passes and just play good defense. And how much of that would you uh, credit to Richfield's uh, pressure defense of their own? They had really good defense, yeah. And Betsy, you had a big three that perhaps uh, sealed it for Central <laughs> as they make a quick exchange. Uh, Willie Taylor has praised your leadership and your IQ throughout the season. How do you think that manifested tonight? Um, you know, I just try to, you know, keep us all calm and uh, feed off of Sade's energy. You know, she gets us going and puts the team on her back and we just all feed off of that. And I just try to keep us all, you know, together. And uh, once we get on a roll, we can be pretty tough. So I just try to keep it going. What did you tell your teammates then after Richfield went up by two late in the second? Uh, I just said stay calm and focus on defense and um, boxing out, rebounding, and our offense will come from that. 
And how would you describe the defensive assignment? Because, you know, January got 18 points, but uh, you made your work very hard to get up there and really shut down everyone else on Richfield's roster. Yeah, uh, she's a very good player. We would try to double team her as much as possible. And I mean, she still had a great game, but yeah, she's very good. 7-0, and uh, you guys are probably going to get some attention now, uh, beating three high-quality teams so far. Just tell me your thoughts uh, starting your senior season like this. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I hope that we keep it going, and yeah, we're having fun. Today, how do you build on it? You talked a little bit about it on Saturday, but the wins keep on coming, and Central's profile is only going to keep rising at this point. Um, I, I'm glad that we're doing good in the wins, but I just we're working for February. So that's what we're working for. As most teams should uh, with the way the playoffs work and things like that. So I know I asked you this on Saturday, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to say hi to anybody that's watching. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, Mom and Dad, Molly, my sister, uh, all my friends, uh, my teachers, and oh, yeah, my St. Cloud coaches. And I know you said hi already, but is there anything you'd like to uh, say, you know, just give you the soapbox here? Um. I think Jessica played a good game, and yeah, that was it. Well, she played a good game, but uh, you have played uh, one step better, especially in the second half, to come out with a win. Uh, congratulations, and uh, hopefully the wins keep coming in Central's direction. Thank you. Thank you. Today, Chapman and Betsy McDonald of St. Paul Central. That wraps up our coverage here. St. Paul Central wins 58-49. For everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.